morning everyone hope you're all having a wonderful day today today we're going to be taking a look at a 22 magnum upper receiver from bear creek arsenal but of course before we get into the video if you want to help me out personally you can of course like share and subscribe as all that is free and does help us out quite a bit on top of that there's also subscribe star which is basically just a pro toy patreon in theory on my website there is something in stock but before we get going go ahead and comment your favorite niche caliber that you can fit in the ar-15 now a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the upper receiver full disclosure on this upper receiver is that it was sent out by bear creek arsenal quite some time ago at this point in time bear creek arsenal no longer works with me i am not sure if they were upset at the last video i put out on their piston upper receiver their gpx upper receiver where it basically was not pinned and did have a critical failure but again they decided to no longer work with me after that video in fact, they still have that upper receiver that I sent back to them for repair work, and I haven't gotten it back yet. I would like to get it back to finish out the video on it, but at this point in time, I think that's somewhat of a lost cause. Now, all that being said, that doesn't affect any of the other videos that I've done for Barker Arsenal because I have done a lot of videos on their products. They're some of the most popular videos on my channel. All of those videos still stand, the issues, the good, the bad, all of that sort of stuff, no problems there and this will be no different. So getting into the actual upper receiver that we have here, this is a 16 inch upper receiver chambered in 22 Magnum. Now 22 Magnum, for those of you who don't know, is basically just 22 long rifle on trend. It's a little bigger, you get 30% more velocity, more energy, that sort of thing. You basically just have an elongated case and hence you get 22 Magnum. Now 22 Magnum is a kind of a niche caliber. It's not particularly cheap, like 22 long rifle, it's almost as expensive as 5.56. It's nowhere near as po as powerful as 5.7 by 28 or 5.56. However, for niche applications, personally, it's basically just a varmint gun. It's too expensive for plinking or target practice, especially even when compared with just 5.56. But it does have very low recoil and additional velocity, additional energy over 22 long rifle. So for varmint applications coyote squirrels so on and so forth where you maybe don't want a center fire rifle cartridge especially if you happen to be shooting in an area where there's other people at least in the vicinity 22 long rifle 22 magnum in this case can make sense as sort of a pest control device now getting into the operating system and how they get the 22 mag upper to run this is the first time that i've ever used a 22 magnum upper receiver in an ar-15 platform of course I'm not sure if somebody else makes a platform, you know, like CMMG sells their conversion kits and there's tons of conversion kits for 22 long rifle floating around. This is a little bit more in depth than that. So you have a very interesting BCG. This is a direct blowback system. So there's no gas rings or bolt or anything else like that. It is basically looks very similar to like a nine millimeter BCG in some ways. Although here you can tell that there is a lot of material removed as there's really not that much energy in 22 Magnum, a little bit more than 22 long rifle. So to get it to run, they've had to do some very interesting things. The backwards gas key on here, I imagine is just for alignment and it's cheaper just to use an off the shelf gas key versus like have like a machined block or something there for alignment and bolt stability, but I digress. Now, this is not the only thing that it takes to run the system. If you drop this BCG and this upper receiver onto a lower with a standard carbine buffer and spring, it will not function whatsoever. So the way that they have gotten this system to run is with a very interesting setup of an extremely long and lightweight buffer. There is nothing inside of this buffer. It weighs probably less than a standard carbine buffer, probably about three, somewhere between two and a half and three ounces and a very, very short spring. What this means is you have something to stop the bolt from over traveling that is very light, won't slow down the bolt very much. And you also don't have a lot of spring tension that allows this blowback operating system, which again relies on the power of the ammunition itself to cycle. Now, all of the testing that we did on this upper receiver with this system, we used exclusively CCI Varmint. It's a 30 grain load rated for about 2000 FPS which in terms of energy is still basically nothing. It would absolutely not move a steel target even at like 25 yards. And at extended distances, it was even hard to hear impacts. Now, that being said though, it's terminal effects with such a light hollow point load going at about 2000 FPS, it would have good terminal effects on again, small game, varmints, what have you. So the system though, in terms of the blowback operating in conjunction with the short spring and the very long buffer, actually worked quite well and we did not have a single cycling or feeding issue we did have three issues with the upper receiver 
and they were all light primer strikes. Now, I'm not particularly familiar with 22 Magnum in general, so I don't know if light primer strikes are a reoccurring issue with certain loads. I don't know if it was just that singular load that I've had issues with. With my 22 long rifle conversions, I very rarely, if ever, have a light primer strike. Most of the time with those, it's a failure to feed, failure to extract, something like that. However, with this system, we had no failures to feed or to extract. Now, unfortunately, they only send out a singular 10-round magazine in the box. The upper receiver, I think, costs about $300, $330 for a 22 Magnum upper receiver, which is definitely, again, fairly interesting and niche. The magazine is made by Black Dog Machine LLC. Never heard of them, but again, the only magazine we tested with that 30-grain varmint load and it did feed, cycle, eject perfectly. The only issues we had were light primer strikes. Now, a slight caveat to the light primer strikes is that the entire time we were testing it, we did use it on this Lead Star Arms grunt lower that comes equipped with a Hyperfire EDT trigger, which is a very nice trigger. It's basically like a mil spec plus. It's definitely not like a lightweight trigger, but if we were using a mil spec trigger with a full power spring and a full weight hammer, maybe we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had those light primer strikes, but I really can't say. The only failures that again that we had with it were three light primer strikes. Last couple things to mention about the magazine itself is that it does have a last round bolt stop, but not a bolt hold open, of course. So it will stop on the last round, but when you pull the magazine out, it will, of course, drop the bolt as it just kind of tells you that it's empty. You only have 10 rounds. I wish that there would be either extended capacity magazines or they would have shipped more than one, but that is kind of that. Now, in terms of the rest of the upper receiver, what we're dealing with is fairly standard Barracuda Arsenal stuff. So you, of course, have your Gen 2 side charger, which is quite good. It is one of the better side chargers on the market. And the Gen 2 is a huge improvement over their original Gen 1s. Now, when it comes to the barrel extension, this is a 16-inch Parkerized barrel. I forget the twist rate. It's like 1 in 10 or something like that, whatever it is appropriate for 22 uh, Magnum. But on the barrel extension itself, we have a pinned fixed ejector. So... Kind of an interesting design. So they have a little hole here, then the ejector slides in, and then there's a pin in place there. It worked perfectly fine. Again, we didn't have any issues with the extractor or with the ejector. So in terms of feeding and reliability, all of that was perfect. Now, the rest of the barrel, there's no gas block, of course, because this is a direct blowback system. There's no gas port either, though it is machined for a gas block journal. Though, again, there is no gas port or gas block on the upper receiver. Now, in terms of the handguard, this is their M-Lock handguard that does technically have seven sides of M-Lock on it, though only in the middle section. The further out you go on the handguard, the M-Lock actually stops when that is probably the areas where you'd most likely to want the M-Lock. In terms of your muzzle device, you have a parkerized spiral flash hider and that about does it for what you actually get in the upper receiver now we did do a little bit of accuracy testing with it again we only had one load to test so i did with this vector one to eight i set up a target at 36 yards and shot a seven or eight round group and i was able to keep it within an inch at about 36 yards from not the most stable of positions so overall the accuracy is probably somewhere between two and three moa with certain ammunition now, I'm not sure if there are 22 Magnum match loads floating around, but if there are with a better shooter, more stable rest, I'm sure you could get that accuracy a little bit better. But overall, it's definitely minute of squirrel, minute of coyote, or whatever else you could be using this for. So in terms of its performance, again, other than light primer strikes, uh, was perfectly fine. Now, the main problem that I and most people will have with this upper receiver is that it's chambered in 22 Magnum. 22 Magnum, again, is a good varmint caliber. If you want a little bit more stopping power, a little bit more expansion than 22 Long Rifle. However, it's really not much cheaper than 5.56. The magazines are all obviously going to be harder to find. It only comes with one 10-round magazine, so you're going to have to source some extra ones if you want more magazines. So it's a very, very niche caliber. If you happen to have a lot of 22 Magnum floating around, and it is your preferred round for whatever sort of pest control that you're doing, then one of these upper receivers can certainly get the job done, especially if you're shooting inside of 100 yards for your pest control. Then again, it can make sense. It only costs about $300. But again, for most people, it is going to be a interesting novelty. Fortunately, it runs well enough. Again, the only issues I had with it were light primer strikes that could have been induced by the somewhat lightened trigger. It's not really a light trigger, but maybe a little bit lighter than like a full power mil spec trigger would be. But overall, the accuracy was fine. The reliability other than the light primer strikes was very good. 
and the rest of it is kind of just Bear Creek Arsenal standard. So at the end of the day, if for some reason you happen to be looking for a 22 Magnum upper receiver for your AR-15, uh, and you're not looking to spend a ton of money, this kind of does both of those things. So with all of that out of the way, guys, let me know what you guys think of 22 Magnum in general in an AR-15, or if there's any other sort of other niche calibers, niche upper receivers, I should be checking out or comparing this against. So with all of that out of the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace off.